Hello students and welcome to week eight. This week I'm doing my video announcement a little bit differently. Um, because you are working this week on creating your own original writing assignment, I wanted to share with you some of my work that I have done in the past. Not that it's perfect, but um, it will give you a pretty solid example of what you can do and how to model. And then you can, you know, choose what you want um, to model and, and then, of course, make it your assignment your own as well. Um, in this short video, I'm going to show you an, an argumentative writing assignment. This is from a, a Writing 122 class that I taught that focused specifically on different types of argumentative writing um, and then a general essay rubric that I developed and I'll tell you the story about that. Um, I don't include a sample student paper here um, but I always would provide students with a sample unless it was the first time I ever used an assignment. Um, I always did a lot of assignment revision and so what I would do then is um, I would often like model bits and pieces um, during class um, as much as I could. And then as soon as I had samples, then um, I would, of course, provide them. Um, but this writing assignment is, interestingly enough, from, oh my goodness, about like 10 years ago. So I can't even believe it's been that long. Um, but I wanted to um, walk you through it and talk about like what I think worked well and maybe what I would do differently. Um, this is very much based on, and I should say everything that I do um, is based on the NCTE um, mission statements and goals that we have in our reading for this week. And so my writing assignments try to always keep that in mind. And my philosophy as a writing professor is to always keep those things in mind. Um, my thinking really is in line with those values of NCTE and um, I I hope that you will be sure to take the time this week and read those very carefully. Um, so without further ado, let's dig in. Um, so this, as I mentioned, is a writing assignment um, from an argumentative class. In this assignment, they're looking specifically at a particular type of argument, and that is an evaluation argument. So it's based on some reading from our text, which was a great textbook. I missed that book. Um, Chapter 8, I point to them, and I give an example. So X is not good, ineffective, bad, the worst, if measured by certain criteria. Um, you can say that X is good and, and if measured by certain criteria as well. So um, that would be the, the main focus. So they're going to evaluate something. And so I have a before you begin section. You'll want to consider the following. And so I give them questions to think about um, before they begin, before they dig in. Um, I give next like the basics of how I want this set up and laid out. Your essay should be guided by a thesis statement. Um, this is your audience. Your audience for the assignment is that traditional academic audience. A lot of times I think it's better if you can give like a more specific real life audience, but sometimes you do just have to go through academic exercises and that includes writing essays for an academic audience. If you are having students write for an academic audience, make sure they understand what that means. So it's not just the professor, it's the classmates. It's not just classmates, it's the professor. And that's kind of a tough, you know, balancing act um, that students will have to engage in, but they should have to work toward that. Um, incorporate at least five sources, um, talk about using the database, um, tips here. I, these are things to do in your introduction, in your body. I want at least five paragraphs. They could have more, of course, but um, those are the things I want to see happen in the, in the body paragraphs and then in the conclusion. Um, here are the deadlines, so check calendar for peer review, um, check calendar for official due date, and then I would require, this was a face-to-face -face class, so I would require at least three drafts to be submitted with each final draft. Um, um, MLA format is required, um, MLA, um, you know, guidelines for documentation, and then I talk about assessment, how I will be evaluating the essay. These are key things that I'm looking for um, in relation to, of course, our work in the course. I do tell them to see the essay rubric.
rubric, and, and we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, length requirements are very specific, and then um, I list the specific course outcomes met by this particular assignment. The course outcomes were um, decided by our whole department together, um, so it was very important that students understood um, what outcomes were being met by, by engaging in this activity. So I, I feel like even after all these years, this is pretty solid. Um, I was definitely commended a lot for my strong writing assignments. Um, and I think it just comes from having a lot of training and writing instruction. Um, I worked a lot with faculty from across the disciplines who would complain and complain that they couldn't get what they wanted from their students and one of the things that I would do is ask to see their writing assignments and um, many times they were like very short um, maybe even a paragraph long sometimes I would see faculty not even give a written sheet with an assignment so oh my goodness you know good luck with that um, so <laughs> I really really worked hard to teach people um, to teach faculty that um, if you want people to give you what you want you've got to tell them what you want and there are pros and cons to this um, and I would say this I wouldn't always not with every assignment have such strict guidelines but depending on which course I taught um, you know that sometimes strict guidelines were a requirement of that and I will say this I've worked as a professional writer I've worked as an author um, most of the time I have really strict rigid guidelines that I have to work within and so I am one of those people who believes in the value of understanding um, how to work within guidelines um, when you're writing because most of the time that's what we have to do like when we're out writing in the real world. Um, with that said, there is creative writing, which I know can be an exception, but even within that, right, there are specific guidelines that you um, use for assignments to help hone particular skills. Okay, but I'm rambling. Let me get to the next thing. I wanted to show you my essay rubric that I developed. Um, the thing I love about this is that it is really specific. Um, the thing that's not good about this is that it is pretty long. Um, so I actually shortened it as much as I could. Um, I took a whole semester of a class on um, rubric development. And I had to create, oh my goodness, we had to create rubrics for so many different types of assignments. I had to create so many different types of rubrics. It really did great things for helping um, to develop my rubric making skills. With that said, um, you should all know that rubrics have their controversy in our field. Um, now, online instruction, every place I've ever worked um, online always has um, really strict requirements in relation to using rubrics, but they are not without their controversy. Some people say they're too limiting. I actually have an article coming out um, very soon in which I defend rubrics, though. I understand there are limitations to them. But I think overall, the pros outweigh the cons. And the biggest pro for me is that students know in advance how they're being evaluated. And to me, that's like a fairness thing. Um, but that's my belief. Um, there are those who disagree with me. Um, but I will say, thankfully, um, my beliefs are in line more with what we have here at Southern New Hampshire University um, who um, does require rubrics for all assignments. But this is um, a rubric I made so you can see um, the categories. I have thesis and focus, organization and development, rhetorical effectiveness, process, sentence structure, punctuation, those kinds of things um, that's continued, and then format and documentation. Put the score here and then um, top three suggestions for revision. So that follows my rule of always giving three things to work on and never more than three things. And sometimes that's hard. You want to like say, okay, here's like eight things to work on, but you can't do it um, because you'll overwhelm the student. Um, the thing that I like about this rubric is that um, I spent probably about a year working on it, making sure that the language reflected at each element was accurate and reflected um, 
you know, the different levels. So um, I hope this is helpful seeing these two things. As I said, I didn't include a student sample here um, only because you probably do not want me to ramble anymore. And um, I would always just hand out a hard copy of a sample to students. So I hope this is helpful. I'm excited to see what you do. I hope that you can take what you like from this and adapt what you don't like and, and add your own flair. Just remember, make your writing assignments clear, specific, and detailed. It really does help. Think about how you feel when you have to write something and you have no idea what you're supposed to write about. You might do well, um, but it's going to be a really, really stressful endeavor. And I think anything that we can do to take the stress and guesswork out of the learning to write process is going to be helpful. Okay, thank you so much. I'll see you in the discussions. Have a great week, everyone.